Hey guys, this is Meg, Janelle, and Kiko, and we are here at Leo Beach in El Nido, Palawan. We flew all the way from Manila to El Nido to eat. They make it look so easy. Hey, first stop. Globi, it's a fusion restaurant. Yeah, so today they're serving us uh, Mexican and Thai cuisine because they're the only ones who serve that here in the beach. What do you have? Okay, you know? now we have um, chicken satay, vegetable burrito. burrito. I have here the pad thai, shrimp pad thai. There's the chicken fajitas and the quesadilla. Looks yum. Nice. What are you gonna try? I already have. Them. Oh, okay. <laughs> have one chicken satay. I'm gonna try the vegetable burrito. Looks really good. Here, I'm getting some pad thai, and I'll make okay. myself some Let chicken fajitas. Yeah, vegetable Good. burrito. I like the, the sauce it goes well with it. Peanut sauce. What is it? Peanut sauce. Peanut sauce. I will try the bad bite. Let me get one more bite of that. With the with the, the sauce on it. Yeah, good for that. I remember seeing the chef from Water and Wine said the same thing about what were you building there? Build, exactly. Build the, your own the, shawarma. Shawarma. Said the same thing about. What is sauce what is being the All right. being yeah, the quintessential yeah. dip, essential dip. ingredient? If you haven't seen that, oh, click on the link that. here. Good video. Good but and probably an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had a good time. We had a good time. <laughs> the pie pie is also good. Hey. Frozen iced tea. Thank you. Mm, frozen frozen iced what? Tea. Frozen iced tea. Oh, okay, okay. Wow. So imagine you're in the beach. Right. You yeah. just get iced tea. You get frozen yeah. everything. <laughs> frozen <iced tea. laughs> I remember back in college, we had this joint just outside the campus where they serve frozen iced tea. And that was the first time to taste frozen iced tea, and I was like, I don't think I've ever, I don't ever think had I've ever frozen had. iced tea. Dude, you should order. Where are we going next? We'll finish, we'll finish this, and we'll head to the next area. Yeah. Oh my God. All right, because we will finish this. I'm a taste Oh no, what's the shot? So I'm here at the factory. I'm having we're, we're choosing our ice cream flavors. I'm having the crunchy honey and the white chocolate with hazelnut. Um, so it's two scoops. Janelle here I has two scoops also. Milo, which is made for a real cacao, according to Adele, and crunchy honey. And I got the third crunchy honey in this round, <laughs> topped with buko. So you can only guess what the <laughs> what the best seller is. Flavor is mango. <laughs> <laughs> Crunchy honey. Crunchy honey, the way to go. Really good. And take it all in. Uh, I got the ice masala chai latte from Isla Smakana. It's really good. They say it's it's like a it's like a hug on a, on a warm or rainy day. It's a warm hug on a rainy day. But we didn't get the warm thing. <laughs> so, yeah, so this is a, a it's a refreshing 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 <laughs> hug on a warm day. <laughs> on a warm day. But it's really good. I mean one the the drink is good. The vibe is very chill, it's very tropical. And I could tell that they really use quality spices for this. It's lovely. It's a very it's just it's just like a nice vibe. And they brought out the game for us to play. Okay, so I saw this game on TikTok. The, uh, the objective of the game is to let the pendulum swing and catch on the, the hook. The hook. If you catch on the hook, you move your the bell one space. Okay. Once I get it here uh -huh. and I get I get uh I get a catch. Yeah. 
I win. And it's usually a drinking game. At this point, oh. you win. Oh, okay, okay. So, you wanna try it? We don't have alcohol. We don't have alcohol, so. but we have the refreshing china. So it's. <laughs> I mean, no one you loses. Win. No in one loses. This game. <laughs> Okay, okay. Wait, almost. No! <laughs> yes! What? That's you. It's okay, I'm still a winner. Yeah, she gets her friend. <laughs> Where are we going? So, so I heard there are good tacos in Leo Beach. We're going there right now to get some. Right now, in, right this, now. Jeep. in this Jeep. We're going there. We're going right there now. right now. Okay. There are good tacos in this Jeep. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Go, this is the good, the best tacos in El Nido. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so they say. From so what do you, what is this? This is beef tacos. So that's good. Try it. Okay, Cheers. Cheers. Chicken. Mm. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. It's good. It's good taco. The beef is good. The sauce yeah. is good. The guacamole. Uh, the guacamole is good. And presented on this bamboo. Very aesthetic. Very aesthetic. Very beach vibes. It's plain, it's simple. What more can you want? So here we are today at Cali Artesano, which is a village slash Filipino artisan hub. Here you can find shops, restaurants, cafes, and participate in a lot of activities like biking, you can rent motorbikes, you can join the workshops, and there's also a nurse school actually. Having breakfast from Islas Maquinas. Uh, what I have right in front of me is the banana heart sandwich. For me, I have their uh, breakfast sausage sandwich. In waffles. Uh, I have the big breakfast. It comes with uh, chicken sourdough, uh, sunny side of eggs, bacon, and sausage. Pork sausage. Pork sausage. Yeah. All right. All right. 
So we shall do it. So I'm taking a bite out of my banana heart sandwich. Which is also, I believe, a vegetarian or yeah. vegan option. Oh, it doesn't taste like. Let me chew first. It's actually really delicious. Um, the, I've never had banana heart, but the way they cooked it, it tastes savory. Um, and the spinach that they used is really fresh. It comes, it, they have a farm at the back, which on good days, that's what they serve the spinach from straight from the farm. And a cool fact is the milk cartons that they use for the cafe. When they're done with it, they, they cut it up, and that's what they use as fertilizer for the farm. Okay, this is the big breakfast and I have everything in one bite. Except for the sardo and the egg, but I'll try that later. Good. Lots of flavors in there. Let's try the sardo. So they make this here in the restaurant, right? Very good. Alright, so when I saw their menu, this is the first thing that I actually gravitated towards. It's a breakfast staple. It's a sausage sandwich. But they do it differently because um, they have it uh, on a waffle. So let's try that. Someone seems to like it just as much. Yeah, man. Hey, bud. You'll get your turn later. Hmm. I like the sausage because it sort of ties all the flavors together on the sandwich. And the good thing about the sausage is that the chef makes it homegrown here at the cafe. So they don't source it anywhere. And the vegetables, you can you can really taste the farm to table how you say this, essence of it. Because <laughs> you know when you, when you grow something versus buying something, you can really taste the difference. There's also a small pastry shop right beside Isla's Machinas called Kubo. Alright, so we have cookies from Charlie's Kubo um, for takeout. Charlie's is actually they, this their satellite uh, store. They have a four-star hotel nearby. But like I said, they have a satellite store here so you can buy cookies and other treats. And I have this for takeout. We spent the rest of the morning riding carabaos and hiking, which you'll find a full feature on that and other outdoor activities on our channel. Then we went back to the beach for lunch. So we're back here on Leo Beach for yet another meal. We're at Liam's Beach Cafe, which is which specializes in local cuisine but with a mix of other dishes from um, Chinese and Mexican dishes. I'm going straight for the mains. So I got a bunch of the sweet and sour pork. It's not the usual sweet and sour pork taste that you might be used to. Yeah. It but it's more still good. It's still good. It leans more on the sour side. But I, I, I do like it. I'm gonna try the salt and pepper It's my favorite. With a bit of vinegar. I'm just ready for anything. <laughs> Very well seasoned. A bit buttery. A bit buttery, that's true. I think sometimes the, the problem with salt and pepper with fruit is that they don't season it well enough, mm. so it doesn't taste like salt and pepper. <laughs> it yeah. just tastes like batter and, and squid, which is not the case with this one. And the squid is not overcooked. Okay, where's everyone at? I'm Please saving the last one try for the, the crispy karekare. Crispy kare, pork kare kare. Which is, I think, one of the two types of karekare kare that they serve. Everyone has a little bit of that. Thank you. <laughs> mm. Very peanutty. Yeah, you're right. In a good way. I like the I like the peanut. Needs rice. I mean, not needs rice, but like good with the rice. So real quick around the table, Liam's yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And crispy carrot. Yeah. And salt and pepper skin. There you go. <laughs> so before anything else, it's about time for sunset. We need to appreciate this. After taking beautiful sunset photos for our Instagram, we headed to Clay Kitchen for what we were told were late afternoon snacks. Alright, so we're here now for late afternoon snacks at Clay Kitchen. 
It's not Spa Bateau. <laughs> yes. Well, yes, there's a lot in front of us. Okay, okay, I get it. So, Janelle, what's what's everything? Um, we have the lasagna, the hot dog for Maggie, the seafood marinara, the clay kitchen special, the spaghetti and meatballs, and the penne and cheese. Oh my god, I got tired just listening to you. Carbs. <laughs> but what is what can be better than pizza? Another pizza that's coming towards the table. Matter. <laughs> Ooh, it's a oh, So it's all meat pizza. Yeah. That just came in. So it's ready to eat. <laughs> Let's go. We are. <laughs> it's kept. Awesome. Let's go. This is a fancy their version of mac and cheese, so I shall have it. They use pen in there, right? Yeah. I'll take the sample of the four cheeses. Mm. 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 Wow. I'm just looking at you. <laughs> that looks so good. It it's good? really loaded with meat. Oh yeah? Okay. It's this good. one's loaded with cheese. Four cheeses, and we haven't tried the the special, the clay kitchen special. You want to try? Oh, this I'm an, I'm on pasta right now, but I can go for it. Okay. So let's go for pizza. I'll go for pizza. The special. Oh. No feels, pressure. No pressure at all. <laughs> I love it. What's inside? You got the meat. You got your. You get your bell peppers, the veggies, and stuff like that. Mix this together very well. This is really good. Mm -hmm. Are you a red sauce person or a white sauce person? Red sauce. I'm a white sauce person. Oh, yeah. But today, the red sauce is winning. Wins it, yeah. yeah. It's, it's so good. good. I love the. the Spaghetti and meatballs. meatballs. Yeah. And we also had the their version of the mac and cheese. White sauce, man. Yes. What do you think? What are you? I was quiet here because I can't decide between <laughs> white sauce and red sauce. I was hoping you guys wouldn't ask me. <laughs> I can't, I don't know. Okay. In general, I don't know if I like white sauce or red sauce better. But I think I'll have to go with, the, with their mac and cheese for this restaurant. Oh, okay. So, you know, maybe I'm a white sauce guy. <laughs> maybe. I'll eat my crust. Me, I'm a red sauce. Person, but you can Today, I'm a red sauce, maybe tomorrow I'm a white sauce, who knows? <laughs> How about you guys? Are you a red sauce or a white sauce person? Comment. Comment. Comment below, or better yet, visit Clay Kitchen here in El Nido. And let us know. El Nido in Palawan is famous for its beautiful and unique landscapes. With picturesque limestone cliffs towering over crystal clear waters, this is a must-visit destination for adventurers. For our trip, we traveled to Leo El Nido for a different kind of experience. Together with other members of the SPOT team, Janelle and Kiko, we tried out activities you can do if you're looking to experience a different side of El Nido. The thrust of Leo Estates is sustainability and ecotourism. If you're staying in any of the resorts here, you may be familiar with Calle Artesano. This is the jump off point for most of the outdoor experiences that we had including the Carabao experience. Hey guys, I'm Meg from Spot.ph and today we are going on adventures in El Nido that does not involve island hopping. I'm with Kiko and Janelle, they're over there getting ready for the Carabao experience which I'll also be partaking in, in a bit. The Carabao experience involves being pulled via Caro up a hill. We'll be dropped off at a certain point for a 5 minute hike to a viewpoint. What's up guys, I'm here right now on the Carabao. Um, the caro. All we have to do is hang on, so I don't really have to do anything. But Sandra here, my carabao, is, is doing all the hard work. She's. They're used to bring. Oh, there you go. They used to bring up all kinds of heavy things. So there I go. I'm a heavy thing. As I was saying, the carabaos here are used to pulling heavy materials up the mountain. The locals say that this is a good exercise to keep them healthy. So it's a win-win. All right. So now we're off the carabao. Now it's time to hike all the way to the top. Hiking up another 5 minutes takes you to an outlook with this beautiful view of El Nido and the oceans beyond. How was it? Okay. It was, at first it was tough because it, the caravan's a bit slippery. But once you get the hang of it, it's pretty good. It's quite an experience, huh? 
Janelle tried it too, right? How was yeah. it? How was it? Ah. You tried it though, the when the we were going first, up. Yeah, right? going up, it was a bit difficult because the caravan didn't really want to, <laughs> to go up. <laughs> to go up. Uh, I just, I guess the challenging part for me was to was finding something to hold on. to. You were a little bit worried that the caravan might be. We we're too heavy for yeah. the caravan, but actually it's good exercise for them apparently. Yeah. So this is just one of the things that you can do here. Uh, where are we? Where? This is an extension of the experience in El Nido. Also, this is Sandra. She's <laughs> pregnant. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Closer to home, there are a couple of things that you can do for a chill afternoon outdoors. One of them is kayaking by the mangroves. There is a calmness to how still nature is here. After passing a narrow corridor of plants where it's hardly wide enough for your paddle, you really feel like you're in the middle of nature with nothing but your paddle and your buddy. It's the perfect opportunity to unwind and relax. Just be mindful of where you're going. We're gonna crash. Dude, you're gonna crash. <laughs> Okay, so we just finished kayaking in the wetlands and it was so peaceful. And now we're more quiet time. Quiet time with nature. We're here at Leo Forest Walk, which is about a 10 minute, 10 minute walk. The forest trail is a nice way to start your morning too. It's a 10 minute stroll in the middle of the woods and away from the noises that we're used to in the city. The path that they lay down is made of recycled materials and the area is also used for research as they keep track of the plants that grow here. For those looking for something more on the adventurous side, you have options to take longer trails as well. The Echo Trail is one such option. We are about to hike the Leo Echo Trail, which is actually just off the main road. Yeah, and it's open to public. Like anyone can just come here and do the hike. So what we were told was that there's not very many fixtures quite yet. Um, it's as natural as it comes. You have some of these benches, you have some signs like it being pet friendly and a view deck on top. I think along the way there are rest stops, so if you're feeling tired, you can just stop for a while, rest, enjoy the nature. The nice thing about the Echo Trail is, while it's on an incline, it's not too tough of a path. Going up the winding road takes about 45 minutes to get to the view deck but it's a beautiful trail with sights to see and its own little viewpoints along the way. Alright, we've reached the viewpoint and now it's time to enjoy the view. There's also a shortcut which involves a steeper incline and will get you from the jump off point to the view deck in around 15 minutes. When you're done enjoying the view, you can take another trail that leads to a different destination. Hey guys, we're here at the river crossing, our first river crossing on our hike on our way to... On our way to Nagkalit Kalit Falls. So apparently, we have to cross nine rivers before we get to the actual waterfalls. So this is the first one and we are heading off now. So... This trek took a little longer and is more difficult than the Echo Trail. <laughs> It took us around 90 minutes, which included 9 river crossings to reach our destination, but it was worth it. Get it to the falls. That's right, there it is, right there. You see it. These are the Nagkalit Kalit Falls. It's both refreshing and picturesque, and somewhere you'd want to visit here in El Nido. Hey guys, I am Mig from Spot.ph and I'm here at the sports complex at NGAC, specifically in their track and field oval. Join me as we get a glimpse of one of their mega structures to look forward to in New Clark City, Pampanga. New Clark City is the next big metropolis near Metro Manila. One of the first infrastructures that stands there is the NGAC Sports Complex, also known as one of the venues of the 2019 SEA Games. We sat down with engineer Nick David, president of MTD Philippines, to talk about the story and design behind this sports complex. We submitted an unsolicited proposal to BCDA, 
thinking this is the solution to the congestion of Metro Manila. And of course, uh, to assist and help uh, for the coming big one. We thought of this idea of moving out of the city and building a new metropolis outside of Metro Manila. So when the SEA Games was to be hosted in the Philippines again, they needed a facility. So they incorporated our proposal to build in a new sports complex. We wanted something that when you come here, you know you're in the Philippines. So the design concept of everything was modern Filipino. So for the stadium, uh, since we're in Pampanga Tarlac area, it was patterned or designed taking into consideration of Mount Pinatubo. So even the color schemes and everything else is patterned after nature and the Philippines. And we are in the NGAC Sports Complex Track Oval. While we're here, why not try the track, shall we? After my nap, we headed to the river park, which is a nice open space with interactive art installations, which is perfect on a nice day out. This is one of the interactive art installations. You can walk inside, you can go around, you can just have a good time here. Soon after our wonderful morning at the park, we headed over to the nearby aquatic center to look at their facilities. This aquatic center features Olympic grade facilities like the lap pool, the diving pool over there, and the training pool. Our aquatic center is patterned after the parols in Pampanga and the baklad, uh, fish nets uh, or fish cages uh, to symbolize water. So those are the sports complexes, but I have one more cool thing for you, which is the new passenger terminal at the Clark International Airport. I'll see you there. This is the new terminal building of the Clark International Airport. We are now at the gateway to Pampanga. Allowing for local and international flights, this will hopefully make Pampanga a hub for tourism and decongest Metro Manila a little bit. So guys, we are here with Ms. Terry, who is the head of the corporate communications here at the Clark International Airport. Sorry. Yes, thank you. Welcome here at Clark International Airport. Thank you. New terminal building. Just for information of everyone, we just opened last May 2, and all flights from the old terminal were transferred here. So you're going to take us through the experience of the yes, passenger? Yes, but yes, yes. Awesome, let's go. One of the first things that people see when they enter the terminal is the cool of architecture. Of course, yes. These wooden structures are called blue lamp. They are laminated wood, so it's glued lumber from Austria. Mm -hmm. um, it's engineered to withstand, you know, we ha we're known for clampy, so it's more durable. And of course, it's aesthetically pleasing. The crisscrossing design is patterned after the Pampanga lantern. So it's okay. a mixture of international and local flavors. That's what we want to communicate here. Mm -hmm. Our airport is contactless. Mm -hmm. And one of the, mo the special features that we have are these kiosks. These are self-service check-in kiosks. What you do is you scan the QR code with your mobile phone, and then the screen is mirrored to your phone. And that's where you navigate and you proceed with your check-in process. This is our event place. Um, so we can, do, we can do events, we can do exhibits here. But these are furniture called the green furniture. It's imported as well. Um, but that one over there mirrors the design. It's locally made, mm -hmm. um, bespoke from a Kapambangan furniture designer. Oh, okay. So this place is like, it sort of turns into like an art installation. Once yeah, in a so while. again, it's a mixture of local and international flavor. That's what we want to tell everyone because um, it's not only an international gateway, but it's also one that is purely Filipino. Yeah. So something that Filipinos can be proud of. So when you go straight, this hallway takes you to the international boarding gates. Right. It's easy to identify because you have green chairs and green carpets all over. So it's color-coded also. So this one is blue carpet for Yes, yeah, so domestic, straightforward, blue carpet, blue chairs. Yeah. We extended the boarding bridge 
and it's see-through all the way so you don't feel claustrophobic when you're yeah. stuck in the ano. And then you can see the runway from here. So again, it's another parang nice view and experience for the passengers. Yeah. So dito, dito tayo mag Instagram, mga ganun, yung parang Yes, actually, flights. oh, 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 maganda yan. Hey guys, the spot team drove a Ford Territory to Pampanga for a food crawl. We'll be trying out dishes from different restaurants, so if you're looking for something new to try the next time you're here in Pampanga, this video is for you. Our first stop is at Koreatown. Donanu is a Korean barbecue restaurant that serves high-quality cuts of pork and beef. Although it's not unlimited, the set menus provide enough whether you're on a date or with a group of 3 to 6 people. It comes with unlimited sides such as spicy fish cakes, glazed sweet potatoes, kimchi, chapche, and a lot more. There are different cuts of beef and pork when you order the set menu, with some marinated for more flavor. The servers will assist you in cooking your meat. So all you have to do is wait until it's ready and enjoy the good food. We all enjoyed our first meal of the day, and we're ready for more. The next stop is I'm Mart, which is right beside Don and New. It's a Korean grocery store filled with everything and anything Korean. We found some BTS coffee, walked around, and discovered a lot more snacks. Like the Binge Chocolate Covered Cookie, Melona Ice Cream, Bingrei Pangtoa Ice Cream Sandwiches, and other Korean ice cream brands. We also got some Shin Ramyun, Cheese Ramyun, Rice Krispies, and Honey Butter Chips to try at home. Janelle, Kiko, and I decided to try some of our ice creams in the car since, well, we kind of got a lot and realized it'll all melt in transit. This is how it went. Melona, if you're watching spot.ph. Melona, bakit naman? Showcase You know what's great about the Ford territory? It's it's so spacious that you can eat Melona inside. Like you don't have to worry about you know bumping into your friends or co-workers. It's great. We stayed at the Hilton Clark Sun Valley Hotel and we got to try their dinner buffet. This had a variety of selections from bread rolls, salads, sushi, hot pot, Angus beef roast, shank and white bean stew, grilled pork belly, and many dessert items to choose from. But the real Kapampangan food crawl starts here at Aling Lusing's. Aling Lusing is responsible for reinventing a dish loved by many, sisig. Her restaurant in Angeles is quite popular to locals, tourists, vloggers, and celebrities. Anthony Bardane even visited this place years back. One tip to food crawling, half rice. Half rice, because yes. we're going to visit a lot more. <laughs> For a mid crawl snack slash dessert, we headed to Susie's Cuisine. They have puto, cuchinta, tocino del cello, and other goodies you can take home or enjoy dine in. 
Okay, so we are done with lunch. Um, that was a good lunch, yeah, but I think we need a palate cleanser. Yeah, so I brought you here at Suzy's Cuisine. This is actually my favorite kahanin in Pampanga. Oh. So it's called Tibok Tibok. It's made out of caramel milk, ground glutinous rice. So kahanin siya, but the texture is a bit like pudding. So it's a milk right. pudding, caramel milk pudding. So, so this is the first time for me to try it. And on top, I think these are, um, I believe it's made out of coconut, so let's try it. Let's dig in. Where do you start? Okay. I don't know. In the corner? Oh no, you're going straight for the middle. Let's do this. <laughs> middle with the coconut topping. Yeah. Oh wow, okay. It's harder than I expected. Cheers. Cheers. Okay. Mm. Why can't I eat right? <laughs> so it's like a thick milk pudding. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's good. That is good stuff. Um, you can taste the caramel smell. A bit coconutty, I guess, because of the topping. Yeah. It's different from your usual um, sapin sapin, cochita. I also, I also, I also want to try this like oh. candy. Oh, yeah. I don't know if it's yogurt candy, so <laughs> you can try that as well. You tried the watermelon version of this, right? Yeah, earlier. It was milky and then you get a hint of the watermelon flavor. How is it? It's okay. <laughs> right? Parang sucks lang. Yeah. <laughs> Let our cameraman try it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we're done here. Um, Moving on to the next place? Yeah. Sisig again. Sisig again. Tapot baboy. Chicha and block that. We're ready to go. Let's go. We are now at our next stop in our food crawl, which is Mila's Tapot Baboy. Yes, we're ordering Tapot Baboy. We're gonna try their sisig and Chicha and block that. So Janelle, you say that this is a must visit for anyone who's doing a food crawl in Pampanga. Yes, definitely. So if you're doing a food crawl in Pampanga, go to Aling Lusing, which is what we did earlier. And then now we're here at Mila's Tokot Babay to try their a uh, few Kapampangan dishes also. So Janelle, you tell me that there's like an unofficial, not feud, but like a rivalry between Milas and Aling Lusing, is that yes, correct? for the Sisig, yeah. So, I'm gonna ask everyone here what their preference is. Let's start with uh, oh Janelle, you wanna, you wanna go first? Uh, I have to go with Aling Lusing, because I like the charred flavor yeah. of the meat, and by a must distinct yung pieces of pork in it, as compared to Milas. What do you think, Mia? I'm gonna go against Janelle and vote for Mila's in the sake of, for the sake of diplomacy, no? But really, I like it drier and a little meatier. No, I'm gonna have to agree with you. Um, I like them both. They're both really good seasings, but I'm more of a fan of the drier, sort of like crispy seasing. That's why I'm gonna choose Mila's. Um, but I'm, I'm, I will say that Aline's seasings is also really good. Just, I'm just putting it out there. Kiko, it's all up to you. Aline, you for me. I like the smokiness of the sea sig. Miles just I feel like fell a little bit short in terms of the flavor profile, but for me, Aling Lusing, the first bite did it for me, I guess. Yeah. Well, so then, Aling we're in, right now we're in an even 50-50, so you guys <laughs> should come over and break the tie for us. So if you're in the comments, leave in the comments, are you an Aling Lusing person or a Milas person? So We'll see you there. As bonus content, here's Janelle serving some ASMR from her Chitron Bulaklak. Mm. We're now at our second to the last stop, Lola Sisa Grill and Kambingan, to try something we haven't tried before. Now we're at Lola Sisa Grill and Kambingan for some calderetang kambing and adobong bibe. So here I have uh, calderetang kambing and adobong bibe. So we're passing it down so that everyone can try it as well. I don't know about you, but I am. Where I think I'm at the part of the crawl where I'm just so full. <laughs> 
it's good. Both they're both really good, but I I can't. There's no more space. There's no more space. There's no, There's no space. space. We have to make space yeah. for this. Man. What did you like better? I like the caldera and the I like the caldereta too. Yeah. So does that mean you can identify caldereta from machado? Or... From machado, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I like the caldereta too. It's, it's, maybe it's because it's caldereta. I think it's just, you know, it's not the fault of the meat, but rather the dish. So. Yeah. It's the kumbing for me. <laughs> so that's four yeses for the caldereta. It's moving on to the final round. <laughs> Before we hit our last stop, we want to thank Ford Philippines for making this trip happen. They kindly lent us the Ford territory and it was a dream to drive and ride to say the least. It's an amazing choice of car for any group of friends looking to go on a road trip. The drive is smooth and the interior is roomy and comfortable. What more can you want? Now let's head to our last destination, Souk. Suk is a restaurant in San Fernando serving hashtag aesthetic vibes and good food. The rustic atmosphere makes it a popular choice for both locals and tourists. Here we are at the end of our food crawl and what better way to end than with desserts. So we have buko pie and palitao from Suk. And of course our fruit shakes and Mia's coffee. and this amazing palitao delight. What's delightful about it, you may ask? It's the dulce de leche or caramel stuffed inside this chewy rice cake. Check out the satisfying clip of that. Pampanga is known for its rich history of food and religion. But did you know that the two are more interconnected than you think? We're here at the Holy Rosary Parish in Angeles, Pampanga. The Holy Rosary Church was constructed from 1877 to 1896. Since then, it has withstood the test of time. But what made it strong is this. Back in the 1800s, egg whites were used as emulsifiers for concrete. It forms a sort of mortar known as argamasa, which binded and protected the building materials used to construct the churches. Knowing how many fires, earthquakes, and typhoons the church has gone through, it seems pretty effective. In fact, other churches in Pampanga use this technique as well. Like the St. James the Apostle Church or the Betis Church in Guagua, one of the churches declared by the National Museum as a national treasure. Or the St. Augustine Church in Lubao, built in 1972 by architect Father Antonio Herrera. But it wasn't just Pampanga that used egg whites. This tradition reaches as far south as Cebu. Okay, right now we are in the Archdiocesan Shrine of St. Michael Archangel Parish, located in Argao, one of the towns in the province of Cebu. So this is one of the uh, centuries-old churches that was built by the Augustinians when they were here in the Philippines. It's interesting to note that the material they use here are limestones or coral stones. So they would cut the stones and they would use um, egg whites. So if there is a construction of the church and going in a particular town, the villagers would be advised to donate at least a tray of eggs. Because the egg white, it has a silica, which is one of the components of the cement. But what happens to the egg yolks left behind? In Cebu, one thing they did is create the dish called torta a kind of pastry made with pork lard and, of course, egg yolk. Over in Pampanga, their dish is still very much ingrained with their culture. Hi, I'm Lilian Lising Borromeo, better known as Lilian. Today, I'm going to share with you a very old recipe. This was brought here in 1600. Why did they bring it here? Because churches and buildings were being built, they used egg whites as cement. Uh, there was a problem here in Mexico and that was how to make use of the excess egg yolks. Millions of egg yolks were buried in one area. That's why they call that masangsang. Uh, these cookies are named after San Nicolas de Tolentino, said to be the patron saint of bakers, of children, of the souls in purgatory, and of calamity. Kagawa na po tayo ng panesilyo de San Nicolas. This recipe doesn't have any rule. You can all add all the ingredients together, tapos Halo-halo, mix-mix, tapos na siya. I need one-third cup of butter, 
half cup of sugar, half cup of milk, or coconut milk. Only four egg yolks, but in the past they use plenty of egg yolks. Corn starch, same amount of flour, half cup of oil, and baking powder. Haluin lang ng haluin siya. Knead it carefully. Huwag po ninyong gagayain ito kasi old-fashioned way po ito. I just want to show you how it was done before. Ang sikreto po dito, pag pinres mo ng ganyan, your fingers comes out clean. Stop ka na. Pero kapag ka meron pa, huwag muna. <clears throat> Kapampangan, we call this pisik-pisik. In Tagalog, wisik-wisik. In Ilocano, worsi-worsi. In English, the sprinkle. Now, my fingers comes out clean, so it's done. We'll start molding it now. Bawat, uh, bawat isang familia, like example this one, uh, galing ito sa familia ng mga warriors sa Pampanga, yung taga Makabebe. Ito ginawa ng aking great-grandfather. Parang kaliskis, kasi meron silang pispan. So, bawat isang pamilya dito, meron kanya-kanya siyang molde. Pag binigyan ka ng San Nicolas, sasabihin mo, tinignan mo yung design, oh, galing ito kay Santana, ganito sa, sa San Fernando, sa ano, gano'n. Parang identification nila. Lagay ko sa, sa gitna, no? And then I'll press it, middle up, middle down. Ang mga kusino, kusinera that time, uh, they stayed in the kitchen morning till afternoon, till na, uh, evening. Uh, nothing to entertain them. So the poor cooks, if not praying, they compose songs and poems inside the kitchen. And they have also exercise. It's like this. Middle up, they will sway their body. Middle down, middle up. Para maganda yung body. It's a labor of love. In the past, they did this. Why? Just to break the silence of the kitchen. Kasi masyadong tahimik. Kaya nga, they, they try to make noise pa. Pero hindi naman kailangan pagbukin mo. And this I'll bake at uh, 300 degrees Fahrenheit for about 12 to 15 minutes. But in the past, they didn't have any uh, timer, so what they did was to pray. <laughs> three Padre Nuestro, three Ave Maria, and three Glorias. Today, I'm in the city of Cebu on a pilgrimage to see the historical churches of Cebu. So join me in my adventure today. Let's do this. Our tour began at the famous Basilica Menor del Santo Niño in Cebu City. This is the oldest church in the country and holds the oldest relics in their museums as well. You can see the Spanish influences in the architecture, especially in their courtyard. This church and convent was founded on April 28, 1565. In the year 1965, it was declared by Pope Paul VI as the symbol of birth and growth of Christianity in the Philippines. Between churches, we get to see Cebuano landmarks like the Sisilex Bridge, which recently became operational. Arriving at our next church and the location of our first holy door is St. Catherine of Alexandria Church in Carcar City. What makes this church stand out from other heritage churches in the region is that the Byzantine influence architecture, twin bell towers shaped like a minaret, and the Greco-Roman themed altar. The city of Karkar was declared a heritage zone, which promotes the restoration, conservation, and maintenance of heritage sites for tourism. They are also known for their lechon, so naturally, no trip here would be complete without it. 
and then we left for the St. Michael the Archangel Church in Argao. Here, the local tour guides gave us a brief overview of the history of the town, which we listened to under the shade, away from the heat. We proceed to say another prayer at the Holy Doors before entering the church. This church is characterized by the high artistic quality and symbolism of its masonry. And it's one of the churches in Cebu with a historical pipe organ, which is still played every Sunday Mass. And with that, we depart the city of Argao for the next church in our tour. But before that, we visited Jesse's Tortahan for a demonstration on how to make traditional Cebuana torta. This is perfect with a cup of tablea. We finally arrive at the San Guillermo Church in Delaguete. Like other churches in the region, this is made of coral stones and faces the sea. We also visited their convent, which is said to still use the original wood from when the church was built. We couldn't stay long though as it was getting dark soon and we still had one church to visit. The Nuestra Señora del Patrocinio de María in Boloon is one of two national cultural treasures in Cebu. It is well known for its well-preserved interior and exterior structures. We got to tour the church. The dress collection of the Nuestra Señora del Patrocinio de María, as well as the Boloon Museum. That concludes our day one. We headed to the resort in Oslo for an overnight stay. This is the St. Gregory the Great Parish in Hinatilan. At first, I thought this would be a sleepy, quiet town, but we arrived to this. Hinatilan is said to be the hometown of St. Pedro Calungsod, a 17-year-old missionary who was canonized as saint on December 19, 2011. After hearing Mass, we paid respects to his shrine and met some of his living relatives. And with that, we left the city of Hinatilan for a mini-adventure before heading to our final church of the tour. This is the trail leading up to Kawasan Falls. While most of it was destroyed due to recent typhoons, the region is starting to recover and has recently opened up its canyoneering activities again. Which means, I was able to do this! And this! So that's a whole adventure in and of itself. But before we head to the next church, here's our drone operator and cameraman Jack for what might be the coolest shot of Kawasan Falls you'll ever see. Finally, we arrive at the last holy door, located at the Santa Ana Church in Barili. Founded in 1614, this church is dedicated to Santa Ana, Mother of the Blessed Virgin. Here we paid our respects to the relic of Santa Ana. We then toured the church, which retains its original coral stone foundations and walls, rising up to a meter before giving way to cement walls. Hey guys, I am Mig from Spot.ph and today I'm in the province of Cebu. Now personally when I think of Cebu, I think metropolitan cities and stuff like that, but that might not be the case. We were invited by the Department of Tourism Region 7 to explore beyond the city of Cebu. Our journey began at the Sirao Gardens, otherwise known as Little Amsterdam. Here we are at Sirao Garden, also known as Little Amsterdam. One of the fun facts is that the colors here of the flowers are used in the Sinulog Festival, one of the biggest festivals here in Cebu City. 
Other than the beautiful flowers, there are spots here for you to take photos for the gram. It's overall a beautiful and quaint location. Here we are at Evo Nature Park. It's a great place to go to if you want to be one with nature. They have a lot of camping, glamping opportunities here. They have places where you can walk around and, you know, eat in the great outdoors. You have the wonderful mountains as your backdrop. And of course, a giant playground for all the children at heart. After our brief stay at Evo Nature Park, we headed to Adlawan Farm to get a demo of the martial art of the Philippines, our niece. They let me try the one stick style and two sticks. It was an honor to get to try a form of martial art that's deeply rooted in the Philippine culture. All right, so we're about to hike the Kan Irag Trail. This is one of the many, many scenic trails here in Cebu. And I'm excited, actually. Uh, I love hiking, so this should be a relatively simple hike. So we'll see how I feel when I get, you know, to the end. If I get tired. Probably will. Let's go! The Kan Irag hike will take you to scenic trails full of sites and flower farms. Here you can stop and literally smell or photograph the roses. It used to be a golf course, hence some paved paths but still retains a beautiful view of the city. So here we are at the resort part of the Lava Mountain River Farm. It's a beautiful resort with a nice pool. You get the views of the mountains and stuff like that and just fresh air everywhere. How can you go wrong? One of the things they do is they harvest pakpo here, which is in an edible herb. They let me try harvesting it myself and showed me how to tell if they are ready. We also got to tour their accommodations, which is perfect for small groups to hold barcadas as well. They also wouldn't let us go without trying their delicacies like bibinka, but honestly, this was something that we could not miss. Cebu isn't all about trekking in mountains. You can also venture out into the sea as we did on our trip to its various islands. Our first stop took us to Sulpa Islet. We are here in Sulpa Island, here in Olango, where we'll be using this as a jump off point for kayakers and other water activities. But for me, I'll be taking a flat boat to a nearby island where we'll be doing some trekking and bird watching. After a quick lunch, we headed to the nearby Olango Island for our next activity. We are here at Polango Wildlife Sanctuary. It's low tide now, which is perfect for bird watching. So that's what we're gonna do right now. The Olango Wildlife Sanctuary is a nature reserve where they study and appreciate the diversity of the mangroves here. It's amazing how many different species of birds you can find here at the nature reserve. I could probably spend the whole afternoon here and not get tired of it. But for now, we'll head to the next adventure.
Davao City is the third largest city in the Philippines. But don't let this metropolitan area fool you. This area has a lot of traditional food, wildlife, and culture that you can experience. My name is Kiko from Spot.ph, and I had the chance to explore a little bit of what Davao has to offer. Our adventure begins at the Montfort Bat Sanctuary. This island is somewhere you can visit to appreciate some of the biggest fruit pollinators in the region. We are here now at Samal Island in Davao del Norte. We are here to check out the Montfort Bat Sanctuary, which is home to over 1.8 million bats. While we weren't allowed to step foot in the caves itself, we still got to appreciate these colonies from a relatively close distance. Behind me, you can see these fruit-eating bats that are the biggest cross-pollinators of durian in the country. Maybe you have them to thank for why Davao is the biggest durian capital in the Philippines. Speaking of durian, this is something we couldn't miss while we were in Davao. So, we headed to where we can get the classic durian snacks. We're here now at Aponilola to try some of Davao's best durian delicacies. They have something like uh, durian ice cream, durian candy, durian pie, and so much more. Come on, let's try it. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Irene, representative of Aponilola. We're here in located at number 28, San Miguel Village. Isa sa mga sikat sa Dabao, Aponilola Dorian Delicacies. 1993, nag-start si Lo Aponilola, si Sir Arnel Roakin, ng paggawa ng candies. Later on, mga 2000, nag siya ng product niya. Aside sa mga candies, nag siya ng mga pastries, Dorian, macaroons, like mga pulburon, hindi siya nag stay sa isang flavor lang. Aside sa mga candies, meron din tayong mga batik. Batik which is meron tayong mga t-shirt, malong, and then meron ding iba ibang mga product ng mga batik. We have also the Dorian Yema with Butter. Ito naman sinasuggest namin kahit first time kang kumakain ng Dorian, ito yung sinasuggest namin kasi hindi siya gaanong matapang. The best. They also have non-durian treats like ube yema and pastillas, which come in big bags for bringing home to share. They even have durian ice cream, which we got to try. Mm. Good. So after getting our fill of traditional treats, we tried something a bit more, shall we say, modern dava. I've been hearing a lot about Bread Shack ever since it popped up during the pandemic. So, I had to try it myself. Hi everyone! Welcome to Bread Shack. Bread Shack is a definitely Davao grown brand. It's home of the best tasting fluff rolls. We call it fluff rolls because it's soft and it's fluffy. But it also comes in different textures in its fillings and toppings. So, we have it in queso, durian, mango, makapuno, and of course, pinya. So, don't forget, on your way home, bring Red Shack. After having our fill of snacks, we got to experience one of Davao's most colorful events, the Kadayawan Festival. We are here at Davao City, at the heart of the Kadayawan Festival. The Kadayawan Festival is one of Davao's biggest events that both locals and visitors alike look forward to every single year. We get more into our Kadayawan experience in a separate video. So, if you'd like to learn more about it, click the link in the description or on the card at the upper right of the screen. Finally, one of the most iconic images of Davao is the Philippine Eagle, something that any tourist would want to see for themselves. We are here now at Barangay Malagos in Davao City, right in the middle of the Philippine Eagle Sanctuary. This facility is managed by the Philippine Eagle Foundation, a private, non-profit organization who's working towards preserving the critically endangered Philippine Eagle, among other species of eagles here in this forest. We're going to check it out. So I'm uh, Jason Ibanez. I'm the Director for Research and Conservation of the Philippine Eagle Foundation. And we're here at the Philippine Eagle Center in Malagos, uh, Davao City. Uh, this is a 12-hectare facility. And we house 33 Philippine eagles and over 100 uh, wildlife that has been rescued. 
The Philippine Eagle Center is the only breeding and rescue facility for Philippine Eagles in the world. Visitors and guests at the PEC can experience uh, um, and also see the majesty and magnificence of the Philippines uh, bird symbol, uh, the Philippine Eagle. There are uh, between 300 to 400 pairs of Philippine Eagles left in the wild, found only in Luzon, later summer, and Mindanao. While the Philippine Eagle Center uh, exhibits Philippine Eagles uh, in captivity, what we really want to do is to save as many uh, eagle pairs in the wild because conserving wild population is really important uh, for the species to thrive in the future. Ako po si Ilmira, um, OGT dito sa Philippine Eagle Foundation. Uh, andito po tayo sa perching area. Perching area kasi lahat po ng mga birds dito, kagaya niyan, is nakapatog lang sila. Uh, may mga keeper po sila. So yung mga keeper lang nila yung pwedeng lumapit, bawal po tayo. Nakadesign yung mga kuko nila para mag-perch. So, dyan lang sila. Pero may iba po tayo naka in, nakapasok sa enclosure. Kagaya ng mga Philippine Eagle natin, tsaka Philippine Serpent Eagle at Pinker Sock Eagle. Actually, hindi lang eagle ang makikita dito. Meron din tayong Estuarine Crocodile. We have actually two. And meron din tayong Philippine Longtail Maka. I would like to invite everyone uh, to please visit the Philippine Eagle Center uh, and uh, join us uh, in conserving um, our majestic Philippine eagle, our national bird, a Filipino bird that is as Filipino as we are all Filipinos. Uh, see you here at the Philippine Eagle Center soon. My name is Kiko from Spot.ph and we are here at Davao City at the heart of the Kadayawan Festival. from Davao City. I'm representing VXI Float and today po we celebrate Kadayawan 2022. Nagbabalik po kami para celebrate ang 11 tribes ng ating Mindanao. Thank you. I'm here at the Kadayawan village, right in the middle of Ramon Magsaysay Park here in Davao City. This structure here um, has been built to celebrate the cultural Moro and Lumad groups of Davao. The old houses here had been rehabilitated and relocated and preserved in celebration of their culture and architecture. Kadayawan village was made to showcase the diverse culture of the peoples of Davao. Davao city is said to be the tri people. We have the Christians, but we also have the Lumads and the Muslims. We have five uh, indigenous peoples na Lumads natin and we have six Muslim tribes that can be found in Davao. Now, it started in the year 1970s when the late Mayor Elias B. Lopez wanted the indigenous people to organize themselves para ma showcase nila yung mga sarili nilang tradition, dances, foods. And of course, their advocacies in life also. The 
Kadeyawan village showcases so much more than just these beautiful homes. You can even take home a piece of Mindanaoan culture by supporting the locals and bringing home their hand-woven products. So it was only in 1986 then, nung talagang gumawa na sila ng isang festival, at first tinahawag pa siyang Apo Dwaling. Came from the word, itong iconic natin na Mount Apo, Durian at saka Waling Waling. But eventually, in 1988, it was signed na talagang gagawin na siyang kadayawan. I'm still here right in the middle of Davao. At the heart of the Kadayawan Festival, you can feel the energy in the streets. The Davaoenos haven't had their Kadayawan Festival in two years. This is typically something that they celebrate annually as a thanksgiving for this year's harvest. Now, the Davaoenos are out and about in the streets here for the Kadayawan Festival 2022. The city government wanted really, hindi lang na maso showcase along the road, na mapapakita, but really to create a community where people all year round mavi visit nila itong place na ito with uh, a cultural center. So we are inviting everyone, Filipinos, at saka yung mga kilala natin ng mga foreigners na nagbibisita dito, bring them to Mindanao, bring them to Davao, especially third week of August. One of the highlights of the Kadayawan Festival is their street parade. And what's beautiful to see here are these gorgeous floats decorated with these beautiful flowers from Davao. It's called Pamulak sa Kadayawan. My name is April. I'm with OP360, and this is the first time that our company joins Kadayawan Festival of 2022. Now, here in Davao City, actually, we've been in abstinence for Kadayawan because of the pandemic, and this is the first time since 2019 that we have been celebrating this Kadayawan event. Now, this is actually the last day of Kadayawan, and this has been the big event, the float parade. 